We have cast a majority vote, and the United States Olympic Committee will be sponsoring the bid of Anchorage. Congratulations. just sort of instant chaos and everybody just responded spontaneously and, and uh, I remember jumping up in the air and sort of twirling around a little bit and everybody was, was moving and jostling and patting and instantly we were surrounded by the, the lights of the TV cameras and the reporters and it was just about two minutes of, of uh, uh, an absolute high, just real, real excitement and just good feeling. The celebration is one the Anchorage Organizing Committee worked hard for. What happened late in the afternoon, June 15th, was the result of many months of long hours and hard work. It was the fitting conclusion to a flawless five days in Indianapolis. To the AOC, it was the day we won. in America's heartland. A smiling, confident Anchorage delegation remains in good spirits after a 12-hour, 3,000-mile plane ride across the North American continent. And we felt good arriving there. We knew we had gone through four rehearsals. We knew we had a good presentation. What we didn't know, though, is uh, what role the politics would play, and, and we were a little bit unsure of that because we had based our presentation and our our chances on the merit of, our, of, of what we had to offer. And spirits are boosted even more a few hours after they arrive in Indianapolis. The delegation is besieged with telegrams from well-wishers back home. That was really, really exciting. That meant a lot to all of us. And we'd, get the, we'd get the telegrams and we'd, we'd pass them around, we'd read them, we'd uh, uh, really help buoy our spirits and, and help keep us, uh, keep us optimistic. The AOC has an entire day to lobby the voting delegates of the USOC before the presentation. They plot their final strategy Thursday night. We were real light on information in our presentation about what our Olympics would mean for the athletes. And we rewrote a whole section of the, of the speech uh, and spent a lot of time talking about what we could do for the athletes. And, and we included that in the presentation. And that turned out to be a real critical, uh, critical page. Saturday morning, the USOC meetings begin. Anchorage goes second, and the AOC makes one of its many smart moves. The committee has Senator Ted Stevens started off. They knew that he really sincerely cared about amateur athletics and that, and that he was uh, not there just uh, for the opportunity of the moment, but that he'd worked for years and years on, on uh, improving amateur athletics in America. Keep in mind as you hear about Alaska's oil production that our federal government refused to lease Alaska's land for oil exploration. We knew there was oil in the Arctic, so we fought for statehood, got it, selected our statehood lands, leased them, and then proved up the largest oil deposit on the North American continent. That oil brings revenues to our whole state, and it is shared with our local governments, as particularly our largest city, Anchorage. Anchorage will not require any government assistance for the Winter Games. Private financing is guaranteed. We're here because Anchorage believes in the Olympics. In all the time I've spent on Olympic matters in the Senate since I got there in 1968, I never received an adverse comment from home. No one has ever asked, what's the Olympics got to do with Alaska? One aspect of our proposal will be important to athletes. Our facilities will be de dedicated primarily to training in the future. Whether it be our three of the five Olympic skating rinks in the United States or the new luge facilities in Fairbanks, Alaska is a place athletes enjoy. Just this last week, I received a letter from Jan Helene, who participated in Jimmy Huega's world record vertical ski event at Alaska. He said, I quote, the hospitality and beauty of Alaska are overwhelming. We are certain that Alaska and its residents have the facilities and the talent to host an Olympic event. After our Winter Games, our facilities and know-how will be a legacy for all United States athletes. We do not have a resident population to overcrowd these facilities. They will be an investment in the future for Olympic athletes. Above all, I hope you realize that Alaska will be with you until we do host the Winter Games. 
We'd like to do it in 1992 and believe that if you select Alaska, the IOC will agree. If it doesn't, we'll be back in 1996. And if the IOC still doesn't agree, we'll be back in the year 2000. We'd like to host and sponsor a first winter sports festival similar to the summer sports festival. And we'd be happy to work with you to initiate such an event if Anchorage is selected. I've never been anywhere in the world where people didn't say to me, we've always wanted to go to Alaska. Alaska will be a strong magnet for full participation in the 1992 Winter Games. Here is Rick Maestrom, president of the Anchorage Organizing Committee, to make our presentation. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen of the UOC Executive Board, Secretary General Miller, and members of the USOC staff, the people of the city of Anchorage are proud to be here today to bid for the right to become America's candidate for the 1992 Olympic Winter Games. We recognize that the Olympic Winter Games will bring much to our city. International recognition, a legacy of facilities and experiences, <clears throat> a bountiful sense of community pride, and a deeper sense of international understanding. But we also think that Anchorage will bring much to the Olympic Winter Games. We bring to you today a young, vibrant, progressive city, selected three times as an all-American city, filled with energy, excited by the challenge, committed to Olympic ideas, yet humbled by the possibility that one day Anchorage may be known forever as an Olympic city. The issue before you today is should Anchorage, Alaska be America's candidate to host the 1992 Olympic Winter Games? The answer to this question lies in two words, qualifications and uniqueness. By qualifications, I mean, does Anchorage have the location, the access, the daylight, the temperature, the facilities to host the games? By uniqueness, I mean, why does Anchorage stand above? Why does Anchorage stand apart? Why is Anchorage uniquely qualified to host the games? Let's discuss our qualifications first. We sometimes look at Anchorage from only an American perspective, but let's look at our location from a world perspective. We're equidistant from Northern Europe, Northern Asia, and the winter centers of North America, a central location for the Olympic Winter Games. Not only is Anchorage central, but we're also very accessible. With a new international airport served by nine international carriers, with a current lift capacity of 11,000 international passengers daily, we are truly an air crossroads of the world. That access is just one of the reasons that Anchorage enjoyed over 830,000 visitors last year, with over 850,000 projected this year. That's 30,000 visitors a week in our hotels. Add new hotel rooms planned are now under construction, plus two luxury cruise liners for members of the press, and we've got plenty of capacity to handle all the visitors the Winter Olympics would generate. But how about daylight? Isn't Anchorage too dark? The answer is as clear and bright as our February days. By our proposed Olympic dates in February, we have gained daylight so fast that we will actually have 21 more minutes of daylight than the average of all previous Olympic Winter Games. Three more minutes of daylight, for example, in Sarajevo. Daylight is simply not a problem in Anchorage. But is it too cold in Anchorage? Absolutely not. Over the past 39 years, the average February temperature in Anchorage has been 17.7 degrees Fahrenheit, consistently below freezing, consistently above zero. Perfect for the Winter Games. And how about snowfall? Over the past 39 years, the average annual snowfall has been 69.0 inches, with an average of 12.3 inches of new snow in February. Communications throughout the world is certainly a key to the success of the Winter Games. With our own state satellite, and over 190 Earth stations, Alaska is truly at the forefront of world communications. Adding to our communications and hosting capability is our new $34 million state-of-the-art convention center with teleconference facilities, simultaneous translation booths, and worldwide communications capability. A perfect press center for the Winter Olympics. Right across the street from our proposed press center is our new $54 million performing arts center now under construction. This center will be ideal for IOC sessions and cultural events during the games. 
In all of America, there are only five Olympic-sized hockey arenas. Only five. Three of those are in or near Anchorage, Alaska. One of those, the Sullivan Arena, will be our primary hockey and figure skating venue. Planned with the Olympics in mind, it has already hosted many international competitions, including U.S.-Soviet games, and has hosted such international figure skating stars as Ty Babylonia and Randy Gardner. Just a few hundred yards away will be our speed skating oval. This $10 million facility will be built to Olympic standards and will accommodate 10,000 spectators. Our Nordic venue is Kincaid Park. Ten minutes from downtown Anchorage, Kincaid has previously hosted national and World Cup competitions. Its sea level location is critically important to the very aerobically demanding Nordic sports. Also in Kincaid Park is the site of our proposed 70 and 90 meter jumps. Over 30,000 spectators will be able to view this event from the base of the jumps. Even though we now have a biathlon course, we propose building a new one, separate from, but close by the other Nordic events. Our Alpine site, Alieska, is just 35 minutes south of the Olympic Village. Served by road, air, and rail, Alieska has hosted many international competitions. Just this month, Alieska proudly hosted the Jimmy Yuga Express, with such skiers as Phil Mayer, Bernard Rusi, Billy Kidd, Stein Erickson, and others, who skied a million vertical feet in just one day. That day was June 1st, just 14 days ago. Alieska is owned by a Japanese corporation, Cebu, who has both a philosophical commitment and the financial strength to make Alieska a great alpine site for the Winter Games. Located just 45 air minutes north of Anchorage is Fairbanks, home of spectacular displays of the Northern Lights and the home of America's newest and most enthusiastic luge center. With a 400-meter run being expanded this summer to 1,000 meters, Fairbanks has over 800 active luge enthusiasts and would be the proposed site of our Olympic bobsled and luge run. Should the distance between Anchorage and Fairbanks pose any problem at all, we have a perfect alternate site just one mile from our Alpine venue. Our proposed site for the opening ceremonies is our downtown park strip. The one mile long park strip was the site of Pope John Paul's 1981 visit. We propose to build temporary stands to accommodate 50,000 people for the opening ceremonies of the Winter Games. Finally, the Olympic Village. Located in the center of Anchorage, the University of Alaska has 680 housing units under construction now, with housing for 2,400 planned for completion by 1992. This Olympic Village will be circular in form and designed with the athletes' needs in mind. This view of the circular Olympic Village demonstrates form, function, security, and the circular symbolism of the games themselves. And the entrance to the village would look much like this. Of all the candidate cities before, before you today, Anchorage has the most central location. It has the best international access. And that has made Anchorage an international community that's favored by Europeans, Scandinavians, and Asians. It has the best location for the European and American TV markets, which are critically important to the success of the games. When we run our events in the morning, it's prime time in the European TV market. As we run our outdoor events in the afternoon, it's prime time on the East Coast, an excellent time all across America. 4 p.m. in Anchorage is 8 o'clock New York, 7 o'clock Chicago, 6 o'clock Denver, 5 o'clock Los Angeles. Perfect for the American TV market. No other city in the world has a better TV position than Anchorage, Alaska. Because of this TV position, we can present a strong financial plan with substantial surplus. The plan calls for a distribution of this surplus to be one-third to the national sports governing bodies, one-third to the USOC Foundation, and one-third to the host city for promotion of sports programs. In addition of our commitment of two-thirds of our surplus to the national sports governing bodies and the USOC Foundation, we are also committed to working closely with each sports federation in the planning and design of our facilities. We are further committed to working with the athletes and former athletes to assure the best possible facilities, the best training environment, and the best treatment of the athletes themselves. For these are the people who are truly at the heart of the Olympics. These are the people who will benefit from our new training sites. And these are the people 
who will benefit from the new competition link between Europe and North America. The final point that sets Anchorage apart is the strong, committed support of our citizens. With no outspoken opposition whatsoever and no controversy regarding the games, 84% of the citizens of Anchorage support our bid for the Winter Games. 84% stand ready to confirm that support on our next, elected, our next municipal election, October 1st. We also have unanimous political support from the city councils of all major Alaskan cities. We also have unanimous support for our state senate, from our state senate. That's the kind of support, that's the kind of commitment that we bring to you today. It's for these reasons that we believe Anchorage, Alaska has the best chance to bring the games back to America in the 1990s, the very best chance to bring it back to America. I've stressed our ideal location, our excellent international access, our perfect television position, our commitment to the sports federations and athletes, and the support and commitment of our people. But there's one thing I've left out, and that is the mystical appeal of Alaska. Alaska. You know it's true what our visitors say, that once you go to Alaska, you never come all the way back. You know, ever since I was a boy, I wanted to go to Alaska. Alaska is an eagle that I want to fly Across the sea of castles reaching for the sky Alaska is the part of me left unexplored Alaska is the warming sun on a misty fjord She is the mystery that I will never take Alaska is her name. came 11,000 years ago. Nomads, crossing from Siberia during the Ice Age on a land bridge that extended to the North American continent. Native Americans, the Eskimos, Aleuts, and Indians of Alaska. Truly at harmony with the land, they developed a culture from the raw young country. Time passed unnoticed until, from the same direction, Western man discovered Alaska. First came Russian explorers, sailing the North Pacific in the 1700s. They found a land rich in seal fur and other resources. English, Spanish, and French explorers followed. And like the Russians, left names on the land and founded communities that to this day cherish their early roots. Seward, preserved in American history by the distinctive phrase, Seward's Folly. In 1867, Seward negotiated the purchase of Alaska from Russia, a $7 million investment. Seward's icebox, cried the critics, a scandalous expenditure at two cents an acre. Mines started changing in the late 1800s, when prospectors headed into Alaska's interior. Then began the frantic gold rush days. And forever, Alaska was etched into the minds of Americans. An awesome land of unreal proportions. Glaciers as big as states. Mountains higher than anything in the Union. Land like they'd never seen. Seward's Folly, the best buy America ever made. Alaska, the spiritual heartland for a country built of frontiers. Here you'll find untouched land, expansive wilderness, earth as it always was, 
and always will be. Seventy years ago, a tent city sprung up in South Central Alaska. Certainly no one imagined that city's future. No one dreamed that something like it was possible amid all that land. Yet today it stands as a testament to those who dreamed and persevered. Anchorage. By the discovery of the massive Prudhoe Bay oil reservoir, North America's largest, Anchorage has become the hub of Alaska, the state's commercial and financial center, its cultural center, its transportation center, its recreation center. And it's easy to see why. Located on a peninsula in the upper Cook Inlet, Anchorage provides an ideal climate temperate summers that blanket the city in lush green. Crisp, sunny winters that sculpt the land in snow and ice. Look for Anchorage residents and you'll find them outdoors summer and winter. Ask them why they love their city and state and they'll tell you to come along and be their guest. Because once you've been to Alaska, you never come all the way back. Anchorage, it's all here today. The past, the present, the future. Waiting for you and the world in 1992. At this very moment, in Anchorage, Alaska, 250,000 people are waiting to hear your decision. They're waiting to find out if we have successfully communicated to you their enthusiasm for the games, their love of our city and their support of Olympic ideals. Today, you speak for America. Your choice is difficult, but your responsibility is clear. To choose the city who represents our nation's best opportunity to return the games to America. That city is Anchorage, Alaska, a vibrant, young, international city accessible to the world, in a beautiful setting, with an ideal climate. A city filled with energy, excited by the challenge, united by the Olympic spirit, and committed to bringing the Olympic Winter Games back to America. Thank you very much. When it was over, when it ended, and we got the kind of response and the kind of cheering and applause and, and uh, emotional response from the audience, and when I looked back and I saw our whole contingent was in tears, and, and the, I looked over to my left and I saw the group of six executive committee members that were standing and applauding, I really felt like we hit it, and we went outside patting each other on the back and jumping up and down and giving each other five and just real excited about what had happened and and at that time reno and salt lake city were waiting to go in and they saw us come out with that kind of reaction i think that had to be pretty tough on them then the announcement and the united states olympic committee will be sponsoring the bid of anchorage congratulations and the celebration Rick Maestrom has one more piece of business to take care of. They sort of hustled me out after about two minutes of celebrating and, and a number of people got me through the crowd and uh, the adjacent room for the news conference and one of the first questions was when that I feel like we had won and I think I said that uh, uh, I felt pretty good when I saw the ladies in the audience crying but when I saw the, the guys with gray hairs crying, with gray hair crying, I knew we had really touched the people. Monday evening, the return to Anchorage, a 14-hour flight made much shorter with the victory and the warm welcome. Way to go. Good to see you.
Uh, as we got closer and closer to uh, the Anchorage Airport, we realized there'd be a group there and there'd be a, a welcome home reception. And I think that just really got us back up again. And uh, coming off the airplane and walking into the air hangar and seeing all the, the, the people from Anchorage there, the, the mayors of the various cities of Alaska and, and uh, the senator there, and just the spontaneous support was really a neat experience for the whole committee, and it's an experience the whole committee will never forget. It's five days the Anchorage Organizing Committee will never forget. Five days that gave the committee all the motivation it needs to press on with the Winter Olympics dream. I think we've got a chance to win for the 92 games, and if we don't win for 92, certainly 96 uh, are the games that are going to be in Anchorage. The Day We Won has been brought to you in part by Alaska Mutual Bank.